Hey Brush Monkeys, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. I wanted to do a couple of extra videos uh, this weekend uh, to cover some timely topics. Uh, most of my videos are done months in advance and then I post them on Friday, uh, which is fantastic, except that when something comes up that's like the monthly White Dwarf reviews, or in the case of uh, this first video I'm doing on the uh, Citadel Contrast paints, um, this, this is something that needs to be done right away, rather than waiting until um, it ends up down the line. If it comes up in the regular rotation down the line, then it's no longer timely and it's it's out of date and nobody cares anymore by that point. So um, anyway. Uh, like I said, this first video is going to be about uh, the Citadel Contrast Paints. And I wasn't originally going to jump on this bandwagon. My Facebook feed has been blowing up with these things. Um, everybody and their cousins doing uh, contrast paint videos right now. It's the latest big thing from Games Workshop. And I am not a huge fan of Games Workshop's paints. Um, now, when I... When I painted miniatures years ago, I took, a, I took about a 15-year hiatus from miniature painting and between like 96 or 97 to about 2012 when I started when I picked it up again and when I when I went on this hiatus I still had a lot of the old Citadel paints that came out in like 91 92 they were still good they're fantastic paints uh, they're made by a company called Coat to Arms now and they were hands down the best paints Citadel has produced so when I when I got back into miniature painting um, I went and bought some Citadel paints thinking that, you know, I still had all these other paints that were still good. I'll add to that collection with more Citadel paints. Um, I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't do any kind of research and didn't realize that Citadel had gone through two other iterations of paints from different companies before settling on the ones they're using now, which come in these little pots, which are pretty much universally reviled like every miniature painter hates these stupid pots <laughs> and there's a uh, we'll get to that in a minute I'll, I'll get back to this um <clears throat> so i didn't realize that the paints they were using now weren't the same paints they had back then and so as i've painted with them they're okay they're serviceable paints but they're not fantastic and they're not um they're not something i'm going to continue with as i run out of paint i'm going to i'm slowly replacing them with uh, other brands and uh, so what I was going to say about these little pots is before Citadel came in these pots they were about that big uh, when they came and uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, P3's paints P3 comes in those same pots and they were fantastic I mean there, there's a fair amount of paint in those pots it's about 18 milliliters um, I'm not a big fan of paint pots to begin with, having worked with uh, with dropper bottles now. Um, and dropper bottles are fantastic for working with a, a wet palette too. These pots are not. These pots, and if you watch any of Games Workshop's videos, there's almost a built-in obsolescence to these, that they want you to paint with the pot open. They want you to just sit here. They've even got a little lock on the back of the pots that keeps them open, and they want you to sit there with the pot open and paint with them like that. Your paint dries out, you, you end up having to buy more paint. You waste a lot of paint that way. With dropper bottles, you don't. Um, you put exactly as much paint as you need on the palette, and that's it. And Citadel has um, routinely ignored the fans who have asked for dropper bottles, repeatedly asked for dropper bottles. Um, Citadel is more concerned with making a profit and selling a lot of paint than about giving the fans what they want. So that's the first problem I have with Citadel. <clears throat> They're more concerned with profit than with actually providing the service that they want. So overall, between that and the quality of the paints, I was not really inclined to jump on the contrast bandwagon. The other thing is, apparently with the contrast paints, you have to use either their Gracier base or their Wraithbone base to get the system to work. If you need a specific undercoat for your system to work, your system doesn't work, period. 
So you can't do Zenithal highlighting with white or gray base coats. It just it doesn't look right. Um, and these paints supposedly don't look right over those paints. So that's my second problem with them. Um, however, uh, a few years ago, I'm gonna I'm gonna digress into a drawn out story here. A few years ago, I gave up meat for Lent. Okay, and I did this because I had been making fun of vegetarians pretty much my entire life, saying that's not food, that's what food eats. But it occurred to me that you know over three quarters of the world is vegetarian and they seem to be doing just fine especially you know countries like China and India that are some of the most populous countries in the world obviously not eating meat is not slowing them down so I decided in the interest of being fair and and not ridiculing a system I know nothing about that I would try being a vegetarian and so I gave up meat for Lent and for 45 days because it was kind of a, a long Lent that year I gave up meat and I tried meat substitutes and uh, in the end I decided that uh, while I could understand how that works for people it was not for me and so I decided to basically do the same thing with the contrast paints I can't sit here and decry contrast paints and say these are garbage these are never gonna work they're horrible without giving them a try so fine I bought some contrast paints I bought the Gracier and the and the uh, Wraithbone bases that you see I've decanted all of them into dropper bottles because that eliminates the biggest problem I have with Citadel um, so the four I bought are uh, Gullum and Flesh Apothecary White I end in yellow and Blood Angels Red and I bought these because um, I gave this a lot of thought um, flesh color any kind of flesh color has always been a problem for me it's not really a problem more of a hassle is like I don't like picking a flesh tone and then picking a shade and highlight to go with it and all this kind of thing there's such a huge diversity of flesh tones in the world that just calling something flesh is borderline racist to begin with uh, because nine times out of ten it implies just white flesh Asian flesh tones, African flesh tones, other kind of flesh tones are, can can be hard to achieve with uh, with normal paints. So I got the Gulliman flesh just to try that out and see if that'd make things a little bit faster. White, red, and yellow are traditionally hard colors for miniature painters to get right. There's uh, a lot of depth, a lot of like white is really hard to shade. Yellow is hard to find a decent mid tone to. Same with red. So I figured these are the most problematic paints. I will. These are the ones that Citadel's contrast paint, which for those of you that don't know, is supposed to be like a base coat shade and highlight all in one one coat of paint. So that's what I, I picked these colors because I figured the problems associated with these colors are the ones that the Citadel uh, contrast line is supposed to solve. So I'd give them a try. So, uh, so that's what I got. I got those six paints, and uh, I've got some test pieces painted up to go with them. So we'll try some of the. We'll cut over the workbench. We'll try some of these paints and see how they work out. And then uh, at the end, I'll give you come back and give you my honest assessment of what I think of them. All right. So, see you in a bit. All right, brush monkeys, we're back, and as you can see, I've got some test pieces made up for the new. Citadel paints these are the contrast paints I'm using um, what these are these are some test sticks from secret weapon miniatures and these things are fantastic um, I strongly recommend picking up a set of these um, each set is actually two sticks and they've just got a variety of different uh, textures like they've got torsos see if you can see those uh, human torsos faces uh, fur cloth plate armor some chain mail different gemstones a little sewer lined you know if you want to practice say rust techniques a brick wall if you want to practice some weathering or graffiti a little crater to do blast effects on and they're they're just little resin sticks for a few dollars uh, for the set and uh, I've painted them I've done one in gray one in black and one in white just to get how different effects 
or different uh, undercoats cause different effects in the paint. And then I glued magnets on the back so that I could stick them to my workbench. But these are definitely worth picking up, especially for something like this where you just want to try out a new technique or you want to um, try a different kind of paint or whatever. And as you can see, I've done the, the male and female torsos, the two faces, and the cloth on this one, and then just the cloth on the black and white ones in the um, Wraithbone undercoat. And then here I've got some bits out of my bits box. I've got a little Space Marine head. I've got a couple of Space Marine arms. And then I've got a towel arm that I'll do the uh, the flesh, the red and yellow, and the white um, on those to to uh, to try them out. So since those are, those are all um, dry, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's start with the Goldman flesh here. And right off the bat, when I was decanting these, I noticed they're really thin. A lot of people have, have compared them to the old Citadel inks. Um, because of that, I'm not using my wet palette for them, obviously. I'm just going to put them right onto my dry palette here. And that is really thin. Um, I did not thin these down at all. I just poured them directly into the pot. The two base coats I did thin down and probably didn't need to because they turned out to be pretty thin anyway. But um, we'll go ahead and stir that up and slop some paint on this thing here. And supposedly the big selling point of this is the one thick coat. You just slap it on and it does what it needs to do. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Hope for the best. That may be a little bit much on that one. Supposedly you can just kind of wick off any pooling that happens. Move it somewhere else. It's a little streaky, but tends to kind of find its own, its own height pretty soon. All right. So there's those. Do the face here. Face of this guy. All right. We'll do a I end in yellow here next. And we're just going to do this on one of the Space Marine arms and one of the uh, fabric pieces here. And uh, I don't recall whether I mentioned I did the the bits in gray sear, which is the other base coat. So you'll be able to see on this video what they look like with the Wraithbone undercoat and what they look like with the gray sear undercoat. I'm not taking a terrible long amount of time with this. I'm just kind of slopping it on there. So, Because that's supposedly how, how it works. You slop it on there and it highlights the shadows and everything all by itself. So we'll see. We will see. I've seen a lot of reviews of these um, one way or the other online. Um, some of them are, are... It seems like the ones that are from Games Workshop employees... And from Games Workshop affiliated people and people who got the paint sets for free, uh, of course, are all fantastic reviews. The ones from independent people or those who paid for the paints all say they're crap. So, I don't know. Like I said, we'll see what's going on. Um, Alright, Blood Angels Red is next. Um, again, piece of fabric and Space Marine arm. Put this one on the black base coat. The the primer, because you have to use the gray sear or the Wraithbone base coat, the kind of primer you use really doesn't seem to make a difference. It, it doesn't really matter. Um, the base coats are kind of thin for base paints, though, so I, I found I had to put like three coats on before I got a decent smooth coverage on there. Which kind of goes against their... Yeah, just do one thick coat and everything will be fine. So, I gotta say, putting them on, uh, it feels more like a wash than a paint, and that's kind of how it handles, is, is a little bit more like a wash. Um, 
it does seem to go on kind of smooth and it's really high pigment because it covers the base coat really nicely um, I'll be honest I was prepared not to like these <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of dig how they're handling um, all right last but not least uh, apothecary white and we'll do this last cloth piece and then the um, towel arm for that and I chose a towel arm bits arm for that because uh, I'd painted my unit of uh, towel pathfinders in um, in white with the uh, little red dot on their sleeves okay right off the bat the um, apothecary white seems to be going on more like a, a very light gray it's like a gray wash um, it doesn't really look white even over the uh, even over the wraith bone it just looks like wraith bone with a gray shade to it but maybe that'll change when it dries I don't know over the gray sear it just kinda looks the same as the gray sear to be honest with you it just kinda looks uh, looks like it just wet another layer of gray sear onto this thing so, alright there we go there's all the uh, all the contrast paint well not all the contrast paints all the contrast paints I have <laughs> um, put on their test pieces and uh, we'll let those dry and then come back in a little bit and see how they look when they dry out and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts on the subject all right see you in a bit all right brush monkeys we're back and uh, taking a look at these uh, test sticks that I've done for the for the contrast paints, let me get the camera down uh, a little better there. All right, and uh, okay, so the Goldman Flesh, I gotta say, I'm kind of pleasantly surprised with these. The Goldman Flesh looks like a really good flesh tone with uh, decent highlights and shadows, and uh, the faces look pretty good. It's kind of, I know it's kind of hard to see on that crappy camera, but and then the I end in yellow. Got all the little highlights and shadows in there. I was not expecting to like these. The red actually turned out really, really nicely. That really picks up the shading in that really nice. For a, a supposedly just a base coat and a shade wash and one thing. And you know, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised by this because they're they're essentially just high pigment washes. So you're painting with inks, really. Um, the white actually looks better than I thought. I would probably, if I was painting white, um, I would probably start with the apothecary white, but then I'd give it a, a like a dry brush of white because that still looks like bone with gray highlights to me. And that's over the um, the wraith bone. Over the gray, the Goleman flesh came out a little redder than it did on the over the wraith bone so it came out a little bit darker a little reddier that's all right um the eye end in yellow looks pretty good um over the bigger plates there's a little bit of pooling in some of the lower areas but uh it seemed to do a pretty good job of the highlight and shadow the red out of all of them i think the red is my favorite the red really came out looking oops keep that on camera there get the yellow on camera <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I got so wrapped up in looking at it that I forgot to actually uh, pay attention to where it was on the camera. The red actually looks pretty good from the looks of it. Um, yeah. Okay. The apothecary white, I can... I don't know. <laughs> Again, I can see some shadows in there. It looks like a... It still looks like gray with kind of a bluish wash highlight... Or bluish wash shadow. It doesn't look... It doesn't look white to me. I would probably give this a, a dry brush of white over the top of it to get it to actually look right. Um, okay, so out of all of them, I gotta say, or out of the out of the four I tried, I will say this: I, I am most pleased with the red. I'm probably the least impressed with the apothecary white. Um, the others seem to work pretty well. Seem to work pretty. Pretty much as advertised, which kind of surprised me. Um, I actually liked the red so much, I took one of the uh, 
uh, demons of corn on these blood letters from the uh, uh, Realm of Chaos box set that I'm working on and th there'll be uh, videos on these guys later uh, probably in a couple of months but um, I like how the red came out so well that I tried it on this guy because when I painted the banner on that you can see the kind of fade I've got on the banner going from red down to almost white hot white um, the that also kind of oversprayed onto the figure so he didn't have just a pure um, Wraithbone base I, I actually kind of I Zenithal primed him so from the bottom he's a little darker and from the top he was a little lighter and then he got that overspray from the banner on him and I didn't repaint him I just slopped on the red over that and it seems to be doing exactly what it's supposed to do it's a little darker in the places where it's supposed to be darker it's it's shading nicely um, and I think this is going to be a really going to end up being a really good color for these guys I think I'm going to try this on all these corn demons when I go to paint them I'm going to do them in that uh, contrast what is it blood angels red um, so yeah I, there's my uh, initial thoughts on it uh, upon testing so I'm going to pause here and move on to our final thoughts. Thanks. All right, so um, my test of the contrast paints, I got to say I'm pleasantly surprised with those. I, I'm not going to go out and buy the entire range and test the entire range. It's 38 paints. I'm not going to I'm not going to mess with that. That's just a ridiculous expenditure to go through, especially at 780 a bottle. Um, I'm not going to go through all that just to uh, that I tested that are traditionally problematic colors for miniature painters came out surprisingly well. I, I really was not expecting to like those. I really wasn't expecting it to be um, uh, to, to work the way they were advertised as far as being the base coat and shade and highlight all in one step. Um, I can see where for I can kind of see both sides of the issue. I can, I can see where where people would not like them because it basically takes something that you've worked really hard to learn to kind of a Fisher Price My First Paint set and and oversimplifies it. On the other hand, I can see where these would be good for beginner painters because we all know that guy at the game store that shows up every Saturday and plays Warhammer all day long gray plastic and he doesn't paint anything um, and this would be useful for getting him to to actually put some paint on the figures because you can do a large army very quickly with this kind of thing um, no more putting on the base coat waiting for it to dry wait putting the shade wash on, waiting for it to dry, put the highlights on, do the details, blah, 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 blah. Paint, paint the details and you're done. Um, having actually tried it on a figure, I can tell you that you don't necessarily need the Wraith Bone and Gray Seer for it to work. Some of them seem to work better over those. Um, I'm looking at the test piece and some of them look like they work better over the the prescribed on the figure that just had regular Zenithal priming he still looks pretty good um, I was really not expecting to like these I was really expecting to to say oh well this is another crap product that GW threw out there um, I'm surprised uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with those Having said that, on the other hand, um, I, I'm still kind of aggravated that GW put out a whole new line of contrast paints aimed at new painters instead of paying any attention to the overwhelming uh, hammer community and the miniature painter community that have been asking for things like dropper bottles and 
uh, wet palettes and decent brushes and just flat out ignored all that and said, oh, hey, here's a whole bunch of new paints and stuff. Uh, and haven't even put out like quality paints for those experienced miniature painters. They just they came out with basically a dumbed down paint system for new painters instead of uh, and not paying any attention to their experienced ones. Disappointed in that, but you know I don't see that changing anytime soon. So I guess there's no point in holding a grudge about that. Um, so yeah, my uh, my. Final impressions of the paint line is they are not as bad as I had imagined them to be. Um, I can see where they have their uses. I can see where uh, new painters are going to be able to produce some pretty stunning effects with these. I think uh, experienced painters are going to be able to come up with some really cool stuff with this. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to trying them out on this uh, Realm of Chaos army that I've been working on. Um, maybe I'll pick up a couple more colors, I don't know. Essentially they're just high pigment inks, so if you have any experience painting with inks, and I'll probably get into painting with inks and washes in a, in a future video, but um, I, I can see where they have their uses. I can see where they have their place on the, on the paint rack and on my palette. Take that as you will. Um, hey Brush Monkeys! Uh, Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. Uh, if you like what you see, click like down below. If you want to be notified when new videos are posted, click on subscribe. Leave a comment below on what you want to see on future videos. And um, be sure to visit our Patreon site, our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Uh, the links are all in the video description below. And I'll see you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.